Welcome back guys. So it is the all day brew day. I have my mask on because I don't know about any of you, but I can't mill grain with a, without a mask. This stuff produces so much dust. Anyway, this is uh, smash beer number two in the series. This is Breeze Munich Malt. Hopefully you can hear me all right. So I'm going to get this milled up, 12 pounds of Munich malt. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Easier said than done, I suppose. Uh, definitely easier said than done. Here we go. So what I'm going to do, because I have such a fine, uh, I milled it so fine, there's not a lot of husk left. There is some. But uh, this is just um, a bag of rice holes. And uh, I'm just gonna put a couple handfuls. That's it. That will help make up for maybe some of the rice hole or the uh, holes in the grain getting too broken up so that my mash doesn't get stuck. All right, I'll be back to mash in and continue on. All right, guys, I'm so excited, so excited. Time to mash in. So. I have four gallons of water here. This is my strike water. And we're sitting at 160 degrees. Uh, and I'm aiming for 155, 100, somewhere between 153 and 155 for my mash temp. So I got this new brew in the bag bag to try out. Um, so we'll see how that goes. One thing I didn't even think about was the fact that it may be hard for me to put any, any kind of lid on this. Um, you know, that's all right. And I also got these new tri these new uh, spring clamps that are super strong. Um, so hopefully that will help with keeping the uh, bag from falling in on itself. You know, maybe. All right, let's get her done. So, got my grain, with my rice holes, and I'm gonna get caught up on my cabling here and my microphone. So the easiest way for me to do this personally is I pour a little bit in. Try not to breathe the dust. Woo! I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but oh my gosh. Once it's in my lungs, guys, it's the worst. <laughs> I probably should have put a mask on. But yeah, it really is. Uh, for some reason, it really gets in my lungs easily, and then it causes me several days of coughing and, and wheezing. Oh, yeah. That's some dust, man. Woof. Now, one thing I'm doing with this batch of beer is I'm, uh, well, I see a dough ball already. Uh, I want to see how much the temperature drops once I get all this in here. Because um, I think, see whether or not, you know, I need to raise my strike temperatures for this. I've always thought they were pretty good, but why not check it, you know? All right, a little bit more. And I think we'll just pour the rest of this in. It's a little bit more than I should probably pour in at once, but. What's that commercial? Uh, good to the last drop. Is that Sanka? Oh, I'm showing my age now. 
Well, it's not Folgers, right? Because Folgers is uh, the best part of waking up, right? But what's uh, good to the last drop? That's, that's something else. Anyway. So uh, if you notice, I don't know if you can see from the camera angle, but it sort of becomes like a cement. So if this is your first time making beer, like all grain like this, and it does this, uh, there's a couple things. First of all, don't panic. That's kind of normal because what you've just done is put a whole bunch of starch into some hot water. So that's pretty normal for that to happen. That being said, um, see, I was going to attempt to put this lid, but I think it's just not going to work with these. I'm just going to leave it the way I usually do and leave it open. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and get the pump going here. Woo! That is way too much. Thank you very much. So one thing you can do if you're having a little bit of trouble like that is um, uh, either turn your pump on like I just did if you have one or just take some water from the spigot on the bottom of your, uh, you know, most, most kettles will have a spigot if you're using them for beer. And then just take some of the water out from the bottom and pour it over the top. The reality is that, uh, where am I at on here? 156, it dropped to. Ah, let's see, let me set this to 154. The reason I'm doing that is because of the way this system works. Uh, yeah, let's leave it at that for a second. The way this system works, so 156, so it only dropped like six degrees. So, no, four degrees, 156, it only dropped four degrees. So it really didn't drop that much in temperature. So, and I think I did a five degree strike water difference. So I was only off by one degree, so that's not too bad. All right, so I think this is pretty well mixed. The deal is with the uh, hose across the top, I'm really not trying to make a huge spray of it and stuff. I really just want to try to keep um, the water circulating and just have it be like uh, an inch above or something like that. I wouldn't mind trying to put a lid on this, but yeah, I just don't see. Uh, just to try to keep, you know, the temperature a little warmer. So anyway, 154 exactly. So we're holding at 154. We'll go for an hour. And um, then we will pull it out, sparge it, and uh, do our boils. So I'll see you back here in an hour when this is done. Right, yeah, so I got about four minutes um, till you know it's officially officially over. You'll notice I put up a ladder. Something new I haven't tried before, but um, if you were here for my last brew day, you would have heard my story. I didn't put it on tape, but uh, where the brew bag fell back into the bucket and drenched me in boiling hot water, it was unpleasant uh, and not great and got beer wort everywhere. So I'm taking a little bit more uh, precaution. I hope this works, you know. <laughs> um, I've never done it before, so we'll see. Uh, I should be able to just push or something here. Yeah, I think I got caught and I was pulling on the actual. All right, so that's nice because it holds it there for me and I can hear it draining. So I'm just gonna, um, in order to sparge this, I'm just gonna grab, yeah, I probably shouldn't use glass, but this is Pyrex and it's only 170 degrees. So I'm probably going to do it. It's a little tricky. I don't know how, you know, on camera, you're probably not able to see this very well. Um, so I'm going to turn the temperature up. It'll be interesting. Uh, one of these, okay, that one was not quite, I'm going to turn this off. It's got to be at 170. All right, so I got some hot water here. And uh, I'm going to film this whole thing, but... All I'm gonna do, maybe I can show you a little bit from this side, is dip this in, hope it doesn't shatter on me. And uh, I mean, I'll do it a little bit better without with the camera, but I'm just gonna pour it through, right? And uh, hopefully I can get it a little bit better into the bag. 
So we call this a modified fly sparge. Not too exciting. Uh, so I'm going to do that for the rest of this. I've got two gallons of water at 170 degrees uh, that I'm going to rinse the grain with. And then, uh, yeah, I'll come back and show you how I lift the grain out the rest of the way and you can uh, see what a pain in the butt it is for me. So I'll be back in a moment after I'm done sparging. All right, <clears throat> so here's where we're at. Uh, it's at uh, 182, so it's still heating up to a boil. Um, I used my handy dandy heat proof gloves, so I didn't burn myself and I squeezed the bag. Uh, I'm sure you've seen this and it's been talked about a lot, but there's nothing to worry about as far as tannins and that sort of thing as far as squeezing the bag goes. Um, really it's not going to hurt anything. So I'm going to start ratcheting this um, bag a little higher. And I'm going to slip this underneath. Actually, I could not have asked for that to work any better. Yeah, it's got to be. Here we go. Here we go. And I'll just slowly lower that down. There. Easy peasy. Yeah, I got to tell you guys, I thought bringing the ladder in was going to be such a pain in the butt and it was just going to be an annoying thing to have to do. But, uh, man, smartest thing I've ever done. All right, so uh, this is still coming up to a boil. I'm going to put a lid on it probably so it can boil a little quicker here. And then um, really you don't see, need to see the next. So it's going to boil for an hour, but 45 minutes in, I'm going to stick one ounce of Columbus hops. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, I'm just going to tell you, yeah, 16.1 alpha acid one ounce only the last 15 minutes there's only gonna be about 22 ibu in this beer so it's gonna it's not gonna even though this uh, this columbus hops are really for pale ale uh so it's really not made for this kind of um grain but it's what i have and i want to use it up and i actually think it's just gonna be fine you know beer a beer is gonna be good yeah it's craft beer you know uh i'll be back after this is boiled for 45 minutes and we can put in the one and only hop edition. So I'll see you there. All right, guys, so here's where we're at. Um, everything's going perfectly well so far, if I do say so myself. And it is now time for the hops. So it's been 45 minutes, and it's time to put the hops in. So this is how I do it, uh, because if I don't, I actually probably can sit like this. You can hear my timer going off. Uh, I usually just tie it off so it's, you know, otherwise it doesn't sit quite low enough. Whew, my glasses are so fogged up I can't see. Um, all right, hops are in, 15 minutes, we'll be back. All right, I promise this time I'm turning my alarm, my timer off. All right, it's been an hour, <laughs> it's been an hour. Um, so here we go. We're just about at the end of this thing. Um, so I'm not going to turn it off quite well. Yeah, I'm going to turn it off. Um, so off. Yeah, I'm good there. First thing I want to do is start getting these hops out. They done done their thing. Uh, 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 see what happens when you tie this off and you can't untie it. All right. Uh, uh, I'm just grabbing my measuring uh, device. Really scientific guys. <laughs> Not really. Uh, I've already pre-measured uh, because the little hash marks inside the mash and boil, not accurate, not even a little bit. Um, but I want to see how much boiled off. So let's see, there's three, there's four. <gasps> wow, that's four. 
Boy, we're barely at four and a half. But I'm going to top off. Because that's how I roll. <laughs> so that's about... Um, yeah. Maybe it's a tiny bit shy of five and a half, but that's about five and a half gallons. All right, so let's get a reading here. I really don't like refractometers very well. Uh, my experience with them has not been great. So we shall see what we shall see. And, oh, it seems about right, actually. I'm trying to think of what I was looking for. Uh, let's see. How do these increment? Oh, man. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 1055, 1056. I'd say it's 1056. All right. Well, I'm looking for 1055. And uh, that's 1056. So I couldn't be more spot on. All right, guys. So I have about... I don't know, four or five of these two liters. Um, they've already been washed. I washed them and cleaned them before I put any water in them. Um, they're in a clean freezer. But what I do is I spray them down, and I'll do that right now a little off camera here. Uh, I spray them down with star sand. All right. So once my wort hits 170, make sure this is nice and tight. Sprayed with star sand, and it goes. And I'll do like four or five more, let it sit overnight. And uh, by tomorrow morning, it'll be about 70 degrees and ready for yeast. So I'll see you tomorrow for moving it into the uh, fermenter. See you then. Well, guys, am I surprised. Uh, it's been a couple of hours. Usually I have to wait overnight, but... Um, Man, that extra, I had one extra uh, two liter of frozen water that I used this time, and it's already down to like 73 degrees. So by the time I get it in the fermenter, it'll drop a couple more degrees. Uh, I've already got a sample that I took here that I'll get a reading on. Um, I could give you a quick, like, did it match what the, oh, no, it didn't. I was going to say, did it match what the uh, hydrometer said? Oh, this is a little bit warm though. I'll let it cool down. Uh, but it's looking closer to 1060, which is even higher. Um, very high. Higher than the refractometer was saying. All right, so I have the hose hooked up. Everything is sanitized already here. Um, taking this off, uh, the airlock. If you don't, it will suck air as I turn the hose and it'll pull the fluid out of the uh, airlock, so we don't want to do that. Uh, I'm really only looking for five, well, yeah, five and a half, so this whole thing, so that way, you all know why we do five and a half, right? So that half gallon of this is probably going to be um, trube and, and yeast, so there's gonna be about a half gallon dead loss, which will give me a five gallon at the end of it all. Well, that can't be right. So this is saying four gallons in here. I measured five and a half. So somewhere there's a discrepancy. Somewhere there's a discrepancy. So the first thing I want to do real quick here again is just check to see if it's level. Um, and that's not very level, is it? But either way, this thing is saying it's closer to four gallons. Now, I did say that my uh, reading here, even though it's a little warm, um, so it'll be off by just a little bit, but not a ton. But I mean, my hydrometer reading, yeah, it's, it's reading... Uh, 1060, which is too high anyway. So what I'm going to do real quick is see if I can uh, 
verify. I don't want to add another gallon yet of water until I'm sure it won't dilute it too much. So give me a second. All right, so, all right, so we're rolling now. Uh, I added seven more cups of water. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering, the reading did come down because it was 1060. Uh, I, I, I haven't done an official, official reading yet, but it's close to like 1056 or so. I mean, it, it, it could come down even a little bit more, but not much. So it's, I'm leaving it where it is. So the way I'm going to aerate this is real simple. You can a lot of times turn, to, you know, this guy turns so well in here that uh, you can just do this. Time to pitch some yeast. I've heard that you don't want to tighten this lid, this like lid too much because it can be hard to uh, get this thing open. All right. If you want to sanitize your yeast packet, go for it. Whatever will work for you is what you should do. I am not too worried. Just don't drop it into the beer if you haven't sanitized it. I suppose that's a good reason to sanitize it. Is if, you, if you think you might end up dropping it into the beer. All right, so that's in the Spundink valve, right? Uh, I talked about this in the unboxing too. Um, let's see, which one is the liquid? So this is the liquid. So on this side, I'm going to put this spunding valve and I can adjust it here, but right now I've got it completely closed. Uh, and let me just make sure these are nice and tight. Good. I think we're good. I think this is about as good as I want to get it. Uh, I'll put a towel uh, over this, a blanket to keep it nice and dark so that sunlight can't hit it. And um, within a few hours here, it should start building up pressure and then I can adjust it. Uh, my plan is to try to ferment it at about 10 PSI. So we'll see you back here in All a right, month. Guys, so it's been a month and it's time to put the beer in the keg. So if you're curious, um, the Spundink valve is sitting at around seven PSI, seven and a half, something like that. Uh, not on purpose. It was at 10. So just over the month, it just sort of lost some of its pressure. So this is going to be interesting because I don't recall how I really did this. Um, but yeah, I know I have some string tied to this. So I'm hoping I can just pick it up and oh boy, that's heavy. Yeah, good. All right, well, it's, it's out, right? It's out. Uh, which side is the liquid? All right, so this side is the liquid. On this side, that side's the gas. So off comes the spunding valve. Done. It's a little bit damp. It's interesting. I wonder if it was trying to make its way out. Anyway, so this thing's under pressure right now. Uh, you pr I don't know that you're going to be able to see this at all. I'm just slide it over and uh, I'm having all kinds of, oh man, all kinds of issues here. Just lost my, uh, my microphone. Holy crap. All right. So liquid on the liquid side. Ah. Gotcha. Gas on the gas side. Gotcha. Okay, so that should do it. Now, let's see if I can lift it into the kegerator. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Actually, that's a pretty good fit. That's awesome. I love that you can see how much is in there. All right, so I don't need to purge it. However, I need to turn the gas on, which is back behind the kegerator. 
So I'm going to open the main valve on the actual on the actual um, CO2 canister all the way. Oh boy. Um, let me tighten this down. Let's see where we're at. Okay, okay. I can hear the gas going in. Good. Usually, let's see, it's a little hard to tell with the angle here. Uh, I better stop for a second because I think we're good. I usually set my um, CO2 to 12 PSI, which is sitting exactly right now at 12 PSI. Good. All right, just totally curious because I never look, I, you can't see it in a normal keg. Yeah, that's good. So good. We're, we're all set. Uh, I will give this a week. You could technically drink it as soon as it's cold, but uh, I just have this rule of thumb that, you know, if I give it a week, it's going to allow anything that's in suspension to drop out and flocculate out basically cold crash and you're going to get a nice more clear beer. Now, if you're wondering, I still need to take a final gravity reading. So what I'm going to do is probably before I go to bed tonight, I will, um, yeah, maybe not. Maybe I'll wait until the whole, cause then, cause then I'll have beer in the line. That's not carbonated. So I think I'll wait, I'll wait a week, let it finish cold crashing. And then I'm going to take a, um, a reading. I'll have, to, I'll have to degas it for the reading and let it come up to temperature. But um, it's a little more complicated to get a, um, a reading when the whole thing's under pressure and you, get, you can't just grab an uncarbonated room temperature reading. So anyway, that's that. And I will see you in a week to find the final gravity and to get a taste how it goes. See you then. Well, here we are. We've made it. And uh, as you can see, I have, hold that thought. I just wanted to get my little cheat sheet here. So we have smash beer number dose, the Munich smash beer. So I won't go through all of my copious notes, uh, but I will say original gravity was 1058, final gravity was 1012, which is pretty close to what I wanted it to be or was it expected to be. As you can see, it has a decent head. It's a little hazy. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it is hazy. Uh, but I didn't put any clarifiers in it. Um, so ending ABV after one month of fermentation, 6.04%. So I don't remember what the first smash beer was, but it was lower. It was like five point something, right? So this is a little higher ABV. If you recall, hardly any hops in this. Uh, I put in a small amount of hops in the last like 15 minutes or something like that. So there's not a lot of hops. Smells fine, no off flavors. I did brew this under pressure, which is something brand new to me. I'm not going to really discuss that too much uh, because I haven't done, I mean, it's the first one I've done like that. And so I don't want to um, do a video or talk about that too much until I've had few more times to sort of work with that and see whether or not it's worth it and, and all that. Uh, anyway, that's nice. That's nice. I will say, as with the first smash beer, and I'm, I'm going to assume this is going to be the same with all of them, it's thin because there's not, it's, it's a single hop and a single malt. So there's no question it tastes thin to me. Like it's not a lot of, there's not a lot happening. <laughs> However, I will say, I really like this malt 
Uh, I like this Munich malt more than the uh, two row pale malt. Um, I just feel like it has more flavor. Uh, it's more weedy sort of tasting, if that makes any sense. I mean, it's not wheat, but you know. Um, obviously it has a different color. That doesn't really, um, I, I, I don't know. Uh, the color doesn't mean much, but uh, in this case, you know, as far as, as flavor goes, but um, yeah, I mean, it looks like a wheat wine or a wheat beer, doesn't it? I mean, um, but uh, yeah, I, I like it better. I like it better than the first smash beer. Uh, I will save a couple bottles of this so that when I'm done with all four smash beers, I can compare all four uh, together. But I have to say, I've never, I don't think I've ever used Munich malt before. So this thing, this is, uh, encouraging me to want to try and make some beers with Munich malt because uh, I really like the flavor. So check the description. I'll have the recipe and all of that in there. And uh, thanks for stopping by. If I didn't say it already, please hit the, the thumbs up button, the like button. Helps my channel out so much. You have no idea. And while you're there, you might as well hit the subscribe button. That way you can get notified every time I put out a new video. And uh, until next time, keep on brewing.